Hey, hello everyone. Here we go, another Facebook Live. I hope everything works today because I have a very special treat for you. I'm Shahar Boyayan, this is Curious Mondo, and today we start a new podcast called Creativity in Focus. Our goal here is to highlight artists all around the world, and we have a very special guest today. She is in sunny California. I think it's a lot warmer than it is here in Utah right now. And we are going to talk to her in a second. This is how it's going to work. We are going to interview and talk a little bit about her life, you know, her challenges as an artist, uh, her, the tools that she likes the most. And of course, we are going to showcase a lot of her art here. I would like you to share this with as many people as possible out there because our goal is to have a different artist every single week and learn from them, learn how they conduct their hobbies or their businesses uh, that is related to art. So it's important for us to have an audience. So I count on you to share this right now, okay? My special guest today is Noemi Smith. Let's see her here. How are you doing today, Noemi? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. How, how warm is your town today? And w which town in California, California are you? I'm in Long Beach. We're supposed Ooh. to be in the outdoor here, getting a little bit colder, and it was a little bit cold, but that's not really happening. Right now it's hot. Anyway. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you are a figurative artist. Which type of medias do you, do you use? I originally started sculpting in polymer clay, and that has been my medium for many, many years until and now I'm still working with polymer clay. I just incorpor incorporated other types of clay, such as paper. Mm -hmm. I'm doing uh, modeling clays, too, for uh, anatomy study, study or wet clay. Uh, and I, I try many, many mediums now, but yeah. I always come back to, to polymer anyway. I like polymer. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that special passion, right? Yeah, we, well, as, as a doll artist, is is my, is my first uh, choice. Okay. Before we go talk about your art, I want to know a little bit about you. Tell me a little bit about you. Okay. Uh, since a little girl, I always loved uh, art. I mm -hmm. start painting and drawing and drawing stuff since I was five years old, probably. Uh, but uh, I never had the chance to, to really to, like take classes or go to school, art to school or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, back there in my country in Peru until I moved here. I've been living here in the United States for about 12 years now and here pretty much uh, I start playing with things like new, new stuff. I I knew I was a creative person. I always like to make stuffed animals and, mm -hmm. and I, I know how to knit. I know how to crochet. I know how to make stuffed animals. I, I know to, a lot of things, a lot of things that I like to do. But That's when I good. came to live here I found out about uh, dolls, the art dolls, and the polymer clay material, and I was fascinated. And I just started searching online, trying to find pictures, tutorials, following another artist, joining uh, guilds and groups for doll makers. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's how this is start for me. That's so cool. So you've been here for 12 years from Peru. Yeah. I've been here for 13 years from Brazil. Oh, really when really you nice. were there, were you making any type of art? Uh, just drawing. Just, just drawing. like charcoal and the stuff. I think right about the end, before I came here, I kind of started playing with just clay, clay. Mm -hmm. uh, just to play and, and make, like, I think I make an, an angel, a boss or something. But I never tried to sculpt like, like very, very detailed stuff. Mm -hmm. no. It was mostly painting. Uh, no, no, no painting, no drawing. Mm -hmm. drawing it was mostly that so that's cool and mm. do you consider yourself self-taught or you oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah i wish i can go and, and uh, that's what i want to do next year actually and i encourage everybody i met that they like to make the stuff and they like to make dolls and everything try to get some education it's always good uh you, you can find a lot of stuff online but that the 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 final point of, of yourself is keep growing as an artist. Mm -hmm. So now that I had the chance, uh, during this time, I probably have taken online classes myself. So it's like uh, I did a, a full one-day tutorial from, from, from this school that offer uh, classes online. And uh, I, when I went to the old conventions, 
we take a little classes there so I never missed at least to make a hand or something and from one of the well-known artists from the whole world and uh, yeah that is the most that I have but I never like sat down and went to college and studied that no, so, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. but you're, you're lucky that you're in California not only you have an abundance of artists there you have tons of events related to art so yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, that's it's, it's, cool. It's a big influence. Mm -hmm. And you, you do BGD dolls. We know you're coming to Kira's Mondo to teach a class next week. Tell me a little bit how you got involved with BGD dolls because they are more, well, work intensive process, right? It's fun to play with them. The dolls are the dolls. That's the difference about making an art doll like this. Uh, my Santa is here. He's an art doll. Uh, you. They're beautiful, and you can put them in some nice place and worship them and, and look at them all the time. But you can't, you cannot play with them. Uh -huh. <laughs> you cannot because you can break them. So, uh, and when you make BJDs, when I found that out, probably was about six years ago when I found about the BJDs. Mm -hmm. You can play with these dolls. Come on, you can dress That's them. The you can part. put. You can put wigs. Yeah, you can put wigs. You can make clothing from them. Mm -hmm. That's that's. That's the most that I like from making BJDs. That's what it captivates me. You can play with your dogs yeah. and being an adult. <laughs> yeah, and you can change them every day if you want, right? So that's the fun part of it. Oh my gosh, I have gone to conventions, a couple conventions of BJDs, mm -hmm. and they're hard, hard co collectors. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. They treat the dogs like they're real person. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit weird, but kind of awesome because I was like, oh my God. Yeah. They they treat them, they name them, they talk to them, and they, oh, God, they travel with them, they dress them. Oh, my God. And you were talking about the people uh, 40 and up, older. Mm -hmm. oh, they're not, not, not kids. It's just older people. So this is really cool. Yes. I mm -hmm. remember, actually, uh, a few years ago, we went to California to a Japanese uh, store where they sell BJDs. And I was so impressive, impressed because I didn't know at that moment how big actually this market is. And they open, I think, two days a week, Friday and Saturdays. All the other days, they're just fulfilling online orders. And you would see, we were there for a few hours, and you would see people coming with their dolls. They could only enter the store if the doll was the same brand but they would come and then start choosing clothes and new eyes. And it's not a very cheap hobby to have either, right? Because it costs, yeah. It was the same as, as a shirt for you, just for a shirt or for shoes. Ooh, shoes are more yeah. mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. You also do this as a business, correct? Yeah, yeah, this is my main career, my main business. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And tell me, tell me a little bit how you run this. I know you, you have an Etsy store. Uh, you also do a lot of social media, correct, to promote? Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, that, I, I held on to that uh, very much. It's, it's very helpful. Like, uh, if I wasn't doing this, if, if I didn't have business, I would not have a Facebook because uh, I don't really see the need of that. <laughs> <laughs> but for, for for make yourself known and be public, you have to do Instagram, you have to do Facebook, you have to do the whole, the whole thing. That's how, how I pretty much yes. work. Yeah, yes. I do have. You a have to be marketing all the time, correct? Yeah, everywhere. It, now everything is going online, online, and you have to keep on moving to that side. So when you use the social media for you, which tools or social networks are the most important to use from the business per perspective? Uh, Facebook, I would say, and of course, Etsy. Etsy advertises uh, himself. It just takes a, a little bit of a time to build up public in, mm -hmm. in Etsy. But uh, yeah, you can totally go for uh, Facebook, and you can totally go for Instagram. Uh, I do on the side of uh, Twitter and other things, uh, but mostly Facebook and Instagram. Okay. And offline, what do you do marketing-wise to promote yourself and your dolls? Uh, I, I have been in an adult contest, like, uh, for the magazine, the main magazine. Oh, cool. I, I have, yeah, I have some of my, my awards here. Mm -hmm. And I also belong to the Professional Doll Makers Guild. Yes. And that's a good way to learn, actually. It's and, a fantastic way. Yeah, to learn, to promote, to share, to find people like you. They have the, the same passion. Mm -hmm. 
Emotional. It's good to it's good to hear that because I know you're you're a lot younger than I am, and many times we hear, oh, millennials don't join. But if you want to improve your skills and get better and get known in a certain environment, it is important to join guilds and associations, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also encouraging to be talking with other people and exchanging questions, thoughts you have, and people, it's, it's always, uh, I don't know, for me, uh, adult artists are always being a nice environment, very mm -hmm. nice people, very loving yes. people. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. Noemi, let's show, are you in your studio right now? Yeah, this is my little studio over here. So this can studio. you show us around a little bit? Uh, I, can, I can't move the camera because the That's camera okay. is <laughs> Just tell me then, you yeah. have a gorgeous Santa right beside you. Yeah. Okay. Tell me a little bit of each piece that you have there. Okay, here is here's an example of the doll, art dolls that I make. Uh, he saw like polymer clay and uh, more hair for the hair. And the little guy here, the, the fox, is needle felt because I, I do mix media a lot. I you mix... do needle felting as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. to do, uh, I always uh, aim to do uh, the type of realistic uh, figures and a figure uh, uh, people like realistic. I'm not much of the doing the kind of a dolly dolly type of things. I like mm -hmm. to do whatever is on the on the on the realistic uh, life life looking of, of characters. How long ago have you sculpted this Santa? Uh, I think he is a couple years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you have some uh, animals there, right? I, I think I see a pig. Yeah, this guy is. Uh, th that's what I was going to uh, tell a little bit. These little guys are easy BJD pro projects that once you learn to make the basic of uh, BJD, uh, you are able to make uh, animals and other kind of uh, characters. These are very easy uh, mm -hmm. type of, of joint. And, and they're that, cute. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're really cute and, and you, can find, you can play with them too. Mm -hmm. And this is one of my uh, professionally uh, reproduced doll, this one over here. I'm going to be showing another one that has the same body because I wanted so, to... So this one is in resin now or is Yeah, still... yes, this one okay. is resin. This one is resin. I have it personally and, cast. And do you do the casting yourself? Or? For this one? No. I have it at home, but... You send out. Uh, yeah. Lately, this uh, couple of years now, that I learned how to make molds and how to cast in resin. So from now on, I'm going to be making my own, mm -hmm. my own, my own productions. Oh, good. That's good. Mm -hmm. you, we also have some pictures here. Is that okay if we show them now? Yeah, sure. And, and you can comment on each one and tell us what they're made of and when you made sure. them. Sure. Okay. Sure, perfect. And then, then we talk about this little guy in the middle here. <laughs> yeah, the class. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, so we are going to start showing the pictures. I was trying to find the link to share, but I can't find it, <laughs> so I can't share. <laughs> okay. Wh which is this one? I think you just put like Princess Mononoke. I don't see it right now. I'm seeing a beautiful, I think it's a wolf. Oh, yeah, it has Princess somebody Mononoke. on top of it. That one won uh, an award from the Dolls magazine. Oh, really? Like, two years ago, yes. Yeah, nice, beautiful. It's, it's big, it's like this size, it's very big. And, uh, Look at that, how many inches do you think it is? 21 inches long, Ooh. probably, but it's wow. pretty big. Yeah, and the wolf is all made in uh, needle felting. Okay. And the doll oh, is the wolf is needle felting? It's all uh, sculpted in wool, yes. Wow, nice, beautiful work. Thank you. you know, needle felting is one of my passions. I love it. Oh, that's that's fun. That's uh -huh. really fun. You can do it's many very, things with the wolf. Very cool. And this this guy this guy is on top of the wolf, right? Yeah, she's in, she's on top of the of the wolf. She's polymer clay. Uh huh. Beautiful. Mm. That's another polymer clay, one of a kind. How do you call call this one? That is from Pan's Labyrinth, the movie. I'm very liking to, I like to fantasy movies and I, whatever I see, I make it. Oh, good. And yes. how tall is this uh, figure? He was about 12 inches tall. 12 inches, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice, beautiful. Let's see another one. Oh, the pigs. That's how the pig is. That, those are uh, casting resin. I, I did cast them myself. 
This one you did cast yourself? Yeah, I, okay. I made it in paper clay and then I cast them all and I make it in resin. Oh, that's, you're good at that. You know that uh, some years ago I tried to do that. Mm -hmm. I'll show you when you're here. I made one BJD. It's oh. a porcupine. Oh, cute. And I tried to cast that. Mm -hmm. I, it was a disaster. <laughs> I, did, I did two classes for resin, though. Oh, good. I, I, I yes. went with an artist here and I took, uh, I think it was three sessions. To oh, have, nice. Because nice. I wanted to have everything right, yeah. Uh -huh. And this fairy? It's a polymer clay, too. And this is new. I made that this year. Mm. That one is polymer clay too. Okay. Do you have a name for that? I can't see from here. Oh, she's Gaia. Is the, the, the goddess? Nice. <laughs> no, I, I'm. Sometimes I make babies too. Do you like to make babies? Yeah, they're cute. They're okay. kind of easy to make. They're they are always ended up being adorable. So this, How this big is polymer is this clay. One? That was probably four inches. It mm -hmm. will fit on the palm of your hand, and these are my uh, reproduction BJDs. BJDs, yes. Mm -hmm. The adult fawn. Yeah. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the one I have here. Uh huh, beside you, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very beautiful. This is another one. That's a blank, yeah. That's, That's the blank. one that I have uh, professionally cast. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I did that, uh, I think, three years ago. Okay. Do you know how many pieces that one has? Oh, God. You're, you're telling me here. Oh, well, I have one here. We can okay. count. Okay. I was, I was going to show you, actually, because uh, I wanted to talk about the class also. Uh-huh. Uh, this is a lot of pieces. <laughs> <laughs> can, so I talk, let's, can I let's talk a little the bit about the class now? now the, or, the one you'll be teaching. Yeah, okay. Okay, this is the thing with the, with the coming class, and I think I mentioned this to you. I was recommending this class for, uh, for uh, somebody that already has experience making dolls, mm -hmm. because it's, I, I would call this an advanced class in doll making, and especially for a BJD. Yes. Uh, I was going to point this out. When you make a BJD, you find two types. You find the type of a single joint, which is a simple BJD, mm -hmm. And you find the type of a double jointed. I have a huge doll here, which is, is my doll, it's my collection, it's factory. I bought this doll. But she's huge, like to show on the on the screen the difference. Mm -hmm. Like she has the simple joints. So it means she only has one ball that connects the pieces, mainly the arm and the, the knee. Okay? When you have a simple joint, you can only bend up to here like 90 degrees wow you see he, that's that's a sing, a single joint mm -hmm. the same is on the leg this is the leg extended and she only has one ball here and you can only bend this much that's that's all it goes the classes i teach i teach are for, for advanced which is the next level it will be the double jointed i'm going to show on the little guy because he's, he's too tiny that's why i'm using bigger models okay uh -huh. On the double joint class, the advanced class for a BJD, it's not only one ball, but it's two balls, like the word say, double jointed. So you, your dog will be able not just to do a 90 degrees, your dog will be able to do a full, a full bending. Uh -huh. I, I hope you can see that because I, I, I see myself very tiny there, I'm not sure. <laughs> the same thing on the legs. Mm -hmm. You will go more than the 90 degrees, you will do a full bending when you do a double joint, okay? Okay. That, that is the classes that I, uh, I'm, I'm going to be teaching. That's why I call this a little bit more complicated. The same thing, and this little guy here, I'm just going to make it in a tiny, tiny version because this is something that I can make in the, in the three days we're going to be working. And this little guy is the same. I don't think you can see his arm. <laughs> can you see? I really can't see his arm. But he can, he can completely bend his arm. And something more special about this little guy he has animal legs, which yes. it, could, it could be used for any type of character. You can make a pig, you can make a doggy, you can make a cat. And, and actually, the, the shape is totally different to a human being. And this little leg, uh, animal leg, is also double, double jointed. Wow. So that's why I, I make that uh, always clear to my students, which one is this one, which one is that. And this is always going to be a, a little bit more challenging class. Uh-huh. It's okay. going to be so fun. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. You're gonna He's have so fun cute. because yeah. he, you end up making your little guy. Oh, this 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 little guy is so cute. I I love him already. Yes. Yeah. And you, and you see, you we are going to have about nine hours to build this little guy here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now, with the models that you just showed, the big ones, how long would it take for a person to make one? At least, uh, if you just sit and work eight days a day, at least three to four days for a big one. For a, yeah. maybe, maybe more for a big one. Little ones, you do it faster. So you're going to be using air dry clay for the fawn, right? Yeah. Why the choice here? Because you said you like polymer clay as well. Yeah. So why do you go with air dry? Lately, I have been using polymer, I mean uh, paper clay, especially for making BJDs, because in some aspects of the main uh, work, work here, it's, I think it's kind of helpful more than polymer clay, or if you are, I'm very used to work with polymer clay, but it has its little challenges when it comes to cutting the pieces and and fitting the pieces, and mostly because when you do a BJDs, you are always going to keep changing things, and you're going to be adding clay here, adding clay, because the, the, the key making BJDs is about fitting, it's about perfectly making the connections, okay? And for that, you have to add clay here, cut, cut, and, and I think that's easier in paper clay. That's what I'm trying to, to do now on my, my dolls, my new BJDs, I'm trying to use more than the paper clay. And so far it's working for me. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I noticed that a lot of BJD artists, they actually many times prefer the air dry clay as well. So I will assume for the same reason, it allows you to make the chains easier. Yeah, you can build up, you can add clay it's easily because with a polymer clay, it's a little bit of a struggle adding clay over clay that is baked. No, it's, it's a little bit of a challenging, I will say. Mm -hmm. Just, just a second. <laughs> okay, it is good. I, we have a lot of comments here on Facebook. Oh. And I'm actually trying to get to them. But sometimes I'm a little challenged with, <laughs> with the technology part, believe it or not. Okay. okay, now everything disappeared. But <laughs> you, you will be able to see those comments later and people are uh, just saying hi. I don't know if you can see from, from your end. I'm trying to find the link. I can't find it. <laughs> Let me see. I, I'll try again. Let's see. Because I wanted to share. Oh, now it's gone. Oh, because I wanted to share this one with. No, I can. Uh. No. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait. Okay, Give me so. Now I have a... Give me one <laughs> second. I want to share okay. this. We are both trying to go. <laughs> so we have here Patricia, Brenda. Uh, Melody is saying, wow, so cute little piggy. Oh, <laughs> An amazing you. needle felting. Uh, is there a way for us to show the, the wolf again? Because it was really amazing. That one won, won an award that year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you know, the good thing about a Facebook Live is that even after it's, it's offline, you can share because it stays. Yeah. Cool. I, I thought we were going to get... Oh, well, I guess we're not getting questions now because... Yeah, not now. Yeah, okay. But if you got, now, now that we can see the, your comments, if you have any questions for Noemi, let, let us know, and I'll be happy to ask to her. I can't see it. <laughs> I tried to share, though. I tried to share the link, so we are still yeah. here. Noemi, so tell me a little bit about the business side for your dolls. Mm -hmm. For example, I know you sell some supplies for dolls, but mm -hmm. what about the dolls? Do you sell? Do you take commissions? Commissions for one of a kind dolls. Mm -hmm. I have sold some of my BJDs. Uh, I want to start making a, a, a better design so I, I can put it in other places or online, or maybe even go to shows for uh, BJDs. Right. But uh, yeah, it, it's mostly that. It's mostly in Etsy. I do eBay a little bit. I don't really like the system they work there. It's kind of not 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 too fair for the 
for the seller. But okay. uh, I still try to do eBay and I still try to do other things. I actually do characters. That's my main thing right now, like monsters and that kind oh. of stuff. I have a uh-huh. couple. I have a couple monsters here. You see, if you learn to make the BJD, you, you can even make these simple characters here. They only move the they only move the legs and the arms and the head. But these are things easy to sell. I sell these guys on uh, on shows here. We do. Oh, really? We have a character show here. It's only about monsters and the movie in- industry for monsters about mm-hmm. the monster Alusa. I do that show twice a year, and we do really great with these little guys. <laughs> this bet. one is another one. How do you call them? Uh, just monsters. This is a skull. Oh, this is a griffin, actually. It's a baby griffin. I, uh-huh. have, a, I have a series of these little guys here, and they do sell well. I also have my, uh, mandrakes and some kind of other creepy uh, kind of a characters. And, and do, you, and, do you mind sharing prices so people that are thinking about, okay, I can sculpt. Of course, I'm going to take Noemi's class at Curious Mondo, and then I'm going to start selling. You make something simple, like little, these little guys here. They're not that complicated to make. And plus, I reproduce this guy. These guys are reproduced. They're mm-hmm. resting by me. And they're wrong about 50 to 80, depending on the design. But if you're going to go into making your little dolls, like the little guy here, if this guy, well, selling a one-of-a-kind of, of uh, BJD is kind of hard because you will have to charge a lot. It's a lot of work. The right thing to do it will be uh, thinking about reproducing. And if reproduce a little guy like this, it could sell from 150 to 200 and blank. And then you paint it, you add 50 or 25, something so like that. So for the people that are not used to BJDs, can you explain what a blank is? Well, a blank means something like this. Not painted, uh, not, not hair, not clothing, just raw like, like that. Mm-hmm. Like the one I have here even, I can call this a blank also mm-hmm. because I have no clothing, no wigs, no nothing. It's just a, a, the, na- the naked uh, doll and, and also it will be no makeup. That's when they, when they say when they, you're buying a blank uh, BJD. So you can paint it yourself. You can put makeup on and do the blushing and everything. But most people like to do their own painting once they get the doll. Is that correct? Yeah, and then you get a blank doll and you paint it yeah, the way you want. Everyone. Yeah, the way you want. Mm-hmm. So if the person is thinking of doing this as a side business, because you know sometimes, Noemi, this mm-hmm. can help somebody pay for college, right? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have to be their profession, but it's a way mm-hmm. to make some extra cash. Mm-hmm. So what you told me is that the best would be to learn to sculpt, create. Uh, a character and then either learn how to cast in resin or find a place that can do that for them so mm-hmm. they could sell those uh, duplicates in, in resin. Is that correct? Right now I think for the art doll uh, industry or if you want to really uh, do make, make some money from this you should really consider about the reproducing in resin, yes, because you can sell them a little bit cheaper and that is easy to it's easy to sell, yeah. Who do you think buys a BJD doll? Uh, collectors, which are people that already know about the business. Uh, people like me, I have about three collected just oh. because I wanted to learn how everything goes. That's, mm-hmm. I, I had three dolls. I have the big one that I show you, and uh-huh. I have uh, another medium-sized girl and a medium-sized boy. I bought those, they're racing. This one is uh, Korean, the other guys are, are Japanese. Okay. Uh, I, I mainly bought it because I wanted to see the connections. And actually, one of my dolls, a blank doll, I sold them to another artist for the same purpose. She wanted to see the connections and, and she wanted to, to, to see. Because many times uh, when we learn, we actually can, cannot easily learn from a book or from something that you can, you know, you need to see. You need <laughs> I have, to see, you need to touch. I, you know yeah. that? I have that with many of my students. It's actually even hard for them to learn from, from even from the video. Mm-hmm. So w- when I do the live classes, it's a completely different uh, totally experience. Totally different experience, yeah. yes, for sure. Yeah, for sure. and many, many people have uh, PDFs, uh, books and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I have friends that, no. Even for me, it's a little bit hard to understand <laughs> PDF. I do well with videos, though. I, uh-huh. I, I have thinking so classes, like, like, like I said, and I, I do well with videos. But 
many times you want to see physically. Yeah, things. of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, Linda here is saying, I'm looking forward to your class, Noemi. How will you get the paper clay to dry fast enough for a three-day <laughs> class? That's a good question, Linda. I wonder if you've been my friend, Linda Efren. Yes. Uh, oh, Linda, hey. It's only my friends looking at that right now. Here's okay, a lady that promotes really well a lot of artists. She does an amazing work with the guild. Oh, she's, a, she's an awesome. I, I know her in person. She's my friend. We hang out on the doll shows. Oh, but, cool. Uh, yes. Uh, that is a secret that never me, must be told. So yeah, you guys have to watch the class. <laughs> What's going to happen? Uh, yeah, everything you, happens here. So Yeah, Come you have prepare. to watch the class and you will see. We want to make this possible. <laughs> we, we will. We will find a yeah. way, of course. Uh-huh. Uh, I was going to ask a little bit more about uh, the class. So tell us what you're going to be doing during those three days so they at least get a feel of how they should prepare. And tell me also, do you have one special tool that you like the most when you're creating BJDs? Oh, my tools are over there. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Just talk about them. I have seen my tools in your store, though. You know, the, uh -huh. the, the ones with the pointy, the silicone tips? The, with the, soft. the shapers, like Karen uh -huh. uses too? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are one of my favorite uh, tools. Cool. And uh, we're going to use uh, stylus bowls, the, the, the tool with the little bowls on the, on the sides. We're going to be using a lot of brushings, actually, uh, like soft type of brush. Mm -hmm. Because uh, paper clays work mainly not with your hand, really. It's uh, built up with water and a soft brush. Mm -hmm. uh, paper clay, is a, that's the case of paper, okay? And uh, what else? Oh, we're gonna need a sector knife for sure. We're gonna need uh, uh, aluminum foil, floral tape, and talking about more tools. Oh, well, if you can make your own molds to make the bowls, I I'm gonna be showing a little bit of that too. You can find oh, uh, you can find the stuff uh, online and make mm -hmm. a uh, like an easy putty silicone mold. Okay. Oh my God. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to be showing that too. Or you can make your balls, in this case, a tiny little thing, you can totally make your own balls for this one. <laughs> it's, it's easier than using molds and everything else. I will show you both ways anyway. I will show you all the alternatives, pretty okay. much. And I, I mostly be, be, will be concentrating on the joints, like where to cut or how to, how to make it fit. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. That's cool. So it's really from beginning to end everything yeah. that you need. Yeah, yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much everything you know up, up to this step. Because after this step, you, you can go ahead and paint it. You can paint it and then make a wig. You can make a little clothing, everything, everything you want. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Noemi, what would you like other aspiring artists out there to know? Tell, oh. leave, leave us with a cool message on how to inspire people to create more. Oh, oh my gosh. That was uh, unexpected. <laughs> no, no, actually that's something that I always had in my mind. Oh, art, good. art is the expression of your inner self. When you mm. build something, you can actually feel like you're, you're, you're creating something from scratch and you, you're making a thing that you can even think that has a life on himself because sometimes they look at you and sometimes they, they tell you how they want to be and what pose they want to be. So for me, it's a stress relief. It really, it, it, it has done that for me in, in these many years. And from, from my students also, I heard many times like when they're battling depression or when they are sick or something, you know what? I grab my clay and I start sculpting and I feel better. That's, yes, right. It's very rewarding about art. It's very inspiring and it allows you to express your inner self and be creative. It's, it's like we're kind of like a special kind of people, I would say. <laughs> Maybe in some cases weird, but... A little uh, weird. <laughs> we're very spiritual. That I know because of the people that I know. We're very spiritual. Mm -hmm. We're very sentimental. And uh, everything we put is on the art we create. Yes. So it's, re it's spiritually said. rewarding, I would say, mm -hmm. art. For sure. Mm -hmm. And I think we all need to, uh, every time we create something, we not only bring smiles to other people, because they're looking at your pieces, at your Santa and your pigs, and they, oh, oh. You know, we are promoting good feelings out there. 
But when we are the creator, we are also learning how to take an abstract idea into something concrete. And when we do that, tell me if it's not the same with you. Uh, we go to all kinds of sentiments, right? We go to frustration. Oh, the face is not the way I want and I have to change. And we learn how to deal with conflict on that process. Yeah, I, I always recommend to, to not be hard on yourself, especially if you are like brand new mm -hmm. and you're just starting doing things. Because art is a call that comes from the very, very inside. So mm -hmm. maybe sometimes, well, I have met students that are really gifted. They can get it on the first time and it's wow. I'm, yeah. I'm like shocked, yeah. But uh, other times I have seen, many times I, I see passion on the person for making, creating something. And I keep saying, uh, and it's true, the secret of this art is uh, practicing, practice and don't give up, practice, practice, practice. And like, and like I said, take class, try to take classes as much as you can here and there or look for advice of somebody that knows uh, more than you. Yes. And uh, yeah, don't try, try to avoid being frustrated because when, when you start, everything is going to be, oh, you should see my dog when I start. <laughs> it's still going to look good for you, maybe, or maybe you're a hard... Do you still have your first doll at all? Oh, no. No, uh -huh. no, no. I sell my first doll for 50 bucks. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, and then you go up, up, up. You, uh, uh, you have to go, you have to look perfection for your things. Actually, that will sell also. It's part of yourself and it's part of, of, of the technique that you know. Yes. And if, if, if people see that, that oh my gosh, that, that piece is really nice and perfect and really made, and of course, they will buy it. Mm -hmm. Tell me one thing. You you mentioned the monster show that you go twice a year. Over the year, how many shows do you attend as a, a vendor? Uh, I always go to the Queenland show in Philadelphia. That's an adult show. Okay. Uh, I, I did another show last year. It was in Asheville. Uh, I met Karen Baker there. She's really cool. <laughs> She's really? really cool. That's cool. Yeah. She probably don't remember me because there were so many people there. And she's very chatty. She was ah, chatting with everybody. But, uh, oh, my gosh, seeing the work of your artist live is amazing. That was my first experience in a doll show. I like to meet uh, my great artist, uh, Mark Dennis, which I worship him greatly. She mentioned him today, actually, during <laughs> class. He's great. He's great. But when you got to see their sculptures, I saw him. I saw Yoga Hoon and I saw uh, Diane Killer, another great artist. When you see those live, and if you have the chance ever in your life or in your town or some, try to go to a doll show. Really, yes. it's a different experience when you can mm -hmm. share, when you can see like it, any seeing other artists work inspires you, yes. inspires you to to work more, to to do better, to learn more. Really, you know, I think even their energy plays a factor on you being there. I remember the very first time I met Jack Johnson, and. I was looking for him for a while, and for me, I, I mean, I had to take a course with him. And just being beside him, it was so cool. It was yeah. so cool. It was He's so a great I, person. This too. person I admire. Mm -hmm. So you need to be close to the people you admire, and mm -hmm. I think the energy, the vibration changes. Yeah, and, 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 and like I said, it's a really thrilling when you meet the artists you follow. Like the Monster Show I do is a different ambience. Because we do uh, all kind of characters, like from the movies, scary movies, uh, sci-fi movies, and you see a lot of monsters. So they, maybe the same type of audience as a Comic Con. Uh, but for monsters. Oh <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, with, for monsters. So, yeah. but you got to meet people like great sculptures. I have met great sculptures there, like Yor Duchel, uh, Steve Wong, uh, yes. uh, uh, Adam Bean. Yeah, those are like, and, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fade to something. But I'm, I'm really glad of being part of that show, though. It's very inspiring mm -hmm. to me for going to this side of making characters for uh, special effect movies. And yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you're in the right place for that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hollywood is right here in the corner. Yeah, you're right on the corner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I went once to the designer con in Pasadena. Have you been to that one? Oh, cool. I'm going to go, yes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Cool. Awesome. Noemi, it's been a pleasure. I'm really excited that you're coming. I can't wait for us to hang out together. And, cool. of course, for your class here. I think it's going to be a huge success. I want to 
just give a final message to everybody watching. Okay. Uh, all right. So I hope you guys don't miss this class. Like I like I said, uh, this is an advanced class. It's going to be very fun, and uh, I guarantee you, I'm going to be finishing the piece. So you're going to be see me making the little guy from the beginning to start. <laughs> yeah, from the beginning to the end. And maybe I even might be changing the character or doing something special. That's another surprise. But the, the construction is going to be the same. It's going to be a little guy with animal legs. And I'm pretty sure you try this later. You watch the class, the class later because you have to take your time to make your own doll. Mm -hmm. You're going to be very pleased with the, the results. And also it's a paper clay. It's a different kind of a medium. Medium it, for you. It's always yes. nice to try something different, believe me. So, oh yes, oh, yeah. yeah. And I, yeah. I don't know any artist that doesn't like to try different things all the time. Oh, we like challenges. Yeah, we will. We, we will like challenges, that. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you're like me. You like the needle felting that is, I don't know, it's a different type of tactile experience, and then you like the polymer clay as well. So we. Yeah, I do everything. Very much. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for your time, Noemi. I, right. I really hope that, you know, this brings you joy, this interview. We are always trying to highlight artists everywhere because it's better, right, to, to get the word out about people we admire. So I'm really honored that you accepted to be our first guest, which oh. is not easy. <laughs> because thank we are you. trying to figure out how to uh -huh. use this. <laughs> But really, really honored that you were our guest here in this first episode. And I really hope to, I, I'm going to be at the airport with a flag there. No, me, no, me. Thank you guys for giving me this opportunity. I was very oh. thrilled really when you contacted me because your site is very, very well known. I was, oh, thank you. It's an honor really being. Oh, the honor is something. ours. Yeah. It's <laughs> always, you. oh, I think really, I believe artists bring joy to the world. And we always need to strive not only to make our skills better, that's what Curious Mondo tries to do, improve people's skills, but it's a vibration thing. You know, yeah. when we are creating, we are living mm -hmm. in a better world and we mm -hmm. need to get more people creating. Yeah. Right? We need that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. And everybody here with us, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you can share this because even when we are offline, the video is on the page. So please share that. Uh, send you a, a, a message here to Noemi. And next Monday, Noemi will be here in Utah teaching how to make that gorgeous phone. All you have to do is sign up. It's free for you to watch free. Uh, just put your name so you get the reminders and you can watch that and it's going to be amazing. My name is Shahar. Uh, everybody here at Curious Mondo is really happy that you're here with us. And I hope to see you next Tuesday with another amazing artist. See you Tuesday. <laughs>